so high, I'm hypnotized What's up is down, what's left is right Chasing stars and holding view I can't see the end, but we'll see it through Right, wonderful. I think we're there. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's stream. Uh, this is our part two on um, silk, uh, on the dark side of silk. Um, and this uh, tonight is going to be led by Whitney, um, who I will bring on. We'll go to Hi. this view. <laughs> Fabulous. Hello. How are you? Hey, I'm fine. How are you doing? It's been Good, a while. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Today's been my day off. So uh, uh, I've been getting a few bits done, but uh, yeah, good. I feel somewhat accomplished. <laughs> good, good. Um, That's good. Just to say hello to Hans, oh, Christian Swartz in the chat. Hello. And anyone else who might be watching. <laughs> Uh, replay crew, hello. Hey, <laughs> Good to see Fabulous. you. Oh, and Maya is dropping Hi, in. Maya. Hey, Maya. Hi, Maya. Welcome. Please hit that like button. <laughs> <laughs> um, fabulous. What's so, should we get into? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> Mine is a little. I don't think it works back, for me. So we won't get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to work on uh, getting some other emoji come up. Um, mm -hmm. Fabulous. So, yeah, do you want to um, sort of start on with a little introduction into what today's um, stream is going to go over? Well, sure. Um, the the last um, present, the last you know video that or stream that that Claire did was about the production of silk, right? The and it, that's called Sarah culture, and. Uh, she she went through all of the kind of the processes and how the silk is made. Um, we're today we're going to talk about how that industry and how that uh, way of you know just discovering silk in general and how that process was um, carried down through quite literally thousands of years. Um, so um, we can start. I just want to if you have any the slides to share are the images. Yeah. I think um, we can start by talking about probably something that most of us have learned in history or throughout our time, you know, just in general is the Silk Roads, right? I think um, from my generation, I'm a Gen X, we learned about the Silk Road through a guy named uh, Marco Polo. So, so, you know, and, and, and that was, there was myth, there was a lot of myth around that, right? Um, the Silk Roads and, um, you know, that that's how trade between uh, the East and the West kind of occurred. And it was, in fact, because of silk. Uh, the Silk Roads actually took place around um, 130 BC, which is before the Common Area era. Um, which actually means that the Silk Road started um, around 2,200 years ago, right? Um, so before the birth of Christ, right? That our timeline. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so um, this is when the Silk Roads. Uh, this is when silk was actually transported from, you know, the eastern parts of the, the uh, that con those continents over to the Western European African um, nations, and 
actually silk was it was being used by um, the Chinese as early um, well the again the myth right we're, we're continuing with the myth of the silk um, if we go to the next um, page you'll actually see that yeah the myth of silk and how it was discovered was um, Shi Lin Chi. Yeah, so the that's one. Yeah, hold on just one second. Right, okay. Oh gosh, I apologize for the flashing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can only say my computer is very old. <laughs> <laughs> So the myth, right, continuing along with the myth of silk and how it was discovered, because silk is a completely natural um, product. Um, it, it's not manufactured uh, by, in, it's not synthetic or nylon or anything like that, right? It's completely natural. Um, the myth is that um, the, the empress, um, Shi Lin Shi, was out in her garden one day sitting beneath a mulberry tree and a, a, a cocoon uh, dropped into her cup of tea. And as, um, and she didn't see it, but as she looked over, she noticed that the cocoon, the cocoon was starting to kind of like unravel. Mm -hmm. And she discovered that that cocoon was actually one single piece of long, you know, thread or fiber and it was very, very translucent, had a lot of shimmer to it and things like that. Now, the myth is, is that this is how silk was actually discovered. Um, and it's a very, you know, this woman is very well known in China as the mother of silk. Um, and I think it was her and her husband that then went in to um, actually make this uh, uh, something that the Chinese um, you know, invested in and produced. Now that was in 2696 um, before the common era, right? Wow, that's like, you know, we're in the year 2000. What are we in right now? 2024. That's, mm -hmm. you know, 2696. So, you know, I hope not for over, over 4,000 years. <laughs> right yeah, yeah. <laughs> back some some way a lot a long time ago right and so so in china um you know this is a very old kind of um fable this she you know she is credited with discovering silk in in that year 2696 was a very long time ago um <laughs> and then silk has been in production and then the the yellow emperor was was responsible for actually introducing and, and looking at the production of of uh of silk so as you can imagine one cocoon falling into one vat unravels to just one single piece of fiber um, i think it was the yellow emperor that then kind of like made that into a production uh type wow. of thing yeah interesting yeah so Let's go to the next slide where we kind of talk about the time scales because they are cr crazy long time ago okay. to think about, we'll right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So this is just in general, it gets very confusing when talking about time. Um, and I think it's interesting that we also talk about, you know, maybe oppressive, you know, industries or oppressive cults, things like that, mm -hmm. right? Um, if anybody ever tells you that the Christians have no influence over society, just point to a time, <laughs> a time chart like this and say, all our time is aligned on when we think Jesus Christ was born. So yeah. that makes no sense, right? So, absolutely. so this is absolutely 100%, you know, year one, you know, is supposedly the, the year that, that Christ um, was born in the manger, if you believe that or not, up to you, but that's where year number one starts. And uh, Christ was born in a manger approximately 2,024 years ago from today. Um, the... 
before present era, you can see this BP era before present is, are things, anything considered AD, which is in our present time, Anno Domini, or the common era. Um, and you can see we're in the, um, the after 2000, uh, 1950 era. So there's before yeah. Christ, before present, Anno Domini, common era, and before common era. So these all kind of translate to roughly the same thing. The thing that hangs up people a lot is this reverse numbering on the numbering line, right? Where, you know, we don't look, we don't talk about it as being um, negative 500 years ago, <laughs> right? Yeah. Or neg you know, or negative 2000 or 200 um, years ago, Hannibal crossed the Alps. Right. That's what that 218 BC is referencing. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's actually, you know, we, we, we go in a reverse direction. So, um, you know, when silk was discovered in, in 2900, you know, that's all the way to the left on this BC timeline. Mm. Literally yeah. thousands of years. <laughs> Yeah, literally thousands of years before the birth of Christ, which was thousands of years ago for us, right? Um, exactly. So, again, you you also find that, in fact, though there's this mythology this mythology built around you know um, the Empress and her discovery of the cocoon in the in the mulberry you know under the mulberry tree. Um, the earliest found silk actually dates back to. 3630 BC which is even way longer right yeah so silk has been utilized by humans we think right since uh 3630 BC which is that's over you know what 5000 years ago yeah that's like phenomenal it's really, really crazy. Now, that oldest piece of silk was actually like silk paper, where it was um, kind of like uh, not um, finely woven, but almost like kind of made like fine papyrus or something that you would, it was kind of flat and hard, you know. So it sounds like they refined the that. process. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, talking about that, I did forget to show it on my stream, but I do actually have my paper silk shirts. Oh. So whilst you're talking, I'm just going to grab them and then I can show sort of a bit yes. of kind of the movability of it, maybe. Mm -hmm. Nope. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, yeah, so ooh, the earliest silk, which means that this is the earliest silk from what we would call silkworms, right? The, the, these are the typical worms that would create a cocoon that had a single, a single layer. Now, when um, the Silk Road began, the Chinese did try to keep um, the technology of silk a secret. Um, peasants were absolutely not allowed to wear silk ever uh, in China until very relatively recently. Um, so they were trying to keep kind of the, even though it's a natural phenomenon, they were trying to keep kind of the, um, the prior, the, uh, prepare, proprietary information about how to manufacture it. Um, if you can go to the next slide, I don't know if you're there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if you can go to the next one. Okay, so th this is a picture um, of the Sarah culture, right? And this is kind of what Claire reviewed last time with the Silk Part One was this pr the production of, of all the cocoons. Right. So on the left is is just all the cocoons that have been gathered off of the trees or the harvesting area where they're keeping these cocoons for, uh, you know, 
their incubation period or whatever. And then on the right side, you have an image of uh, what would be uh, tea, right? <laughs> or whatever uh, you know, type of solvent or, or liquid they're soaking those cocoons in. And you know, each one of those cocoons is, is one of those very, very tiny little itty bitty threads, right? Those are silk threads. So silk can be done like this because the strength of silk is amazingly strong. It's very, very strong. Um, it looks like here, right, you're, you see a bunch of cocoons in kind of soaking in water while there's a loom, um, or a, I'm sorry, not a, a loom, a spinner um, that is unwinding each one of those cocoons by its one tiny thread, right? So the, the spinner is actually gathering those into a single uh, woven together yarn of, of uh, looks to be around 20, 30 different silk, um, silk threads. So very minute, tiny operations, right? Um, the, the production or sericulture of silk, um, of course, was not kept a, a secret. It moved quickly into places like India or uh, Korea and other places like that, where people then kind of put their own spin on it, um, um, their own production. And so there are different types of silk based on maybe uh, the type of worm or what that silkworm eats. Um, maybe mulberry silk, for instance, uh, is silk from silkworms that actually eat mulberry leaves. Um, I think that, I, yeah, I think for sericulture. Okay, and yeah. then we can go yeah now this is raw whoops yeah raw silk and this is what it would look like right and it's really hard to imagine that each one of these little threads came from one cocoon <laughs> right and it was just slowly unraveled right it's really amazing that i really like this um this photograph because you can see very clearly the texture of the silk thread um, opposed to cotton, just a very um, kind of typical cotton cording that's wrapping the raw silk, right? Um, yeah. And you can see, yeah. The texture and the thick thickness is like so, so different. Yeah. And the cotton has a fuzziness to it it's because they have very you know cotton is very just short staples of fiber that are twisted in, into yarn right the cotton is much whiter the the um to me this looks like hair <laughs> right yeah. it looks like hair exactly. wrapped with cotton cord um, so it's that sheen and that luster and that little bit of translucence with the shine that comes through, right, that really gives silk its really uh, unique properties that, quite frankly, can only be found in nature, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, I thought it was funny that you, when I, you know, I read, I was listening to your presentation and you were talking about the spider silk. Yeah. And um, I just can't believe that there are people that would, that seems very time intensive and laborious, right? To, to spin spider silk silk and I mean I don't know how different the properties would be but that's the thing that's what I couldn't find anything that showed them like capturing it as in because you know like you think when you go for a spider web it just breaks up right so right but obviously these were particular spiders yeah so then I'm yeah. like so then are their webs like you know did they find out about their webs being silk because they didn't break up. Yeah. 
yeah. um, you know, and then they sort of uh, went for it that way. The same as like with the fleas and uh, flies and things like that. And I was just like, how how are you finding out that there, there's yeah you know, still comes with them? Because again, there was nothing really sort of uh, producing any sort of um, yeah. Fishery. There's no yeah yeah, and I wonder um, if they they are milking those creatures or how they do that you know yeah similar to them and then that thing how they came onto the thing about the sheep yeah Mm -hmm. oh well i don't know i think the the silk fiber is very nice because i would imagine that the spider fiber the spider silk fiber fiber would be very like a lot lot smaller in diameter than this cocoon silk um yeah but that's exactly. just that's just my guess right um the spider silk too you, you have to keep in mind that um it's extremely strong for how large it is right so you'd have to really blow up a lot of spider silk to for it to actually show its towing power or something like that you know it would not be cost effective so that's yeah, kind exactly. of why yeah, that's kind of why I think instead of trying to make, you know, trying to make silk or trying to make animals who produce silk, you know, maybe we should just <laughs> focus on what those properties are and how they occur in that natural environment and then replicate that somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Because actually I was um, looking up leather um, earlier and it's interesting like looking at places um, now making um like manufacturing leather out of yes. um that isn't based on animals basically right um, yeah but sort of it has those same properties uh yeah yeah so that's sort of something that i'm kind of uh yeah we'll sort of dive into at another day but um yeah and we talked says, about that a little bit with the um when we were talking about synthetics and how synthetics are spun, it, you know, kind of back in the seventies, it was very cool to have like a shiny shirt that was very hot and trapped all the moisture <laughs> inside, you know, but it was a cool fabric. Right. And then we refine those things over time. And now polyester is actually has a good hand can almost feel like cotton, things like that. Right. So yeah. It feels to me like we haven't, I'm wondering if there's been any technological processes made with silk and sericulture in, in those production things, right? It's kind of yeah, odd. Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And actually, um, one that I might touch on next week is something that I found out today, which is, um, oh, uh, recite, uh, uh renewables um mm -hmm. who are one of the um, big sort of uh, factories uh recycling um all sorts of different fabrics they do it through a chemical process um and it's mm -hmm. sort of called oh my god now i'm gonna forget the name because it's on my instagram mm -hmm. um but it's called like uh cyc cyclables or something uh, hmm. Let me find it and I'll um, uh, say it properly. But anyway, they um, they are going into bankruptcy, sadly. Um, mm. So I would like to just sort of look into that more because I'd heard of the company. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. So Renew Cell is the company and they have made Circulose which is this chemical, oh. chemically produced um, uh, recycled material, but it actually, um, uh, but yeah, so, but I, so I knew about the company, but I didn't know about this circulose. Mm -hmm. And apparently they have um, worked with companies like Tommy Hilfiger, H&M, uh, Gangy, and you just think, and so um, uh, Sustainable Fashion Forum, who uh, have like published this article on it, are yeah. like, but did anyone actually know about them? Because that's the trouble <sighs> is that like, there's all these companies yeah. doing these great pioneering things with new fabrics, 
yeah, yeah. they're not telling the world and it's like so no wonder they're going you know this yeah. company off the back of all of them are going under because the rest of the fashion industry is so secretive about what they're using who they're using whereas um you know sort of people would actually go back to them and shop through them because at the moment the high street is getting pretty dead even mm. in these big stores because people are now waking up and realizing that they can't trust them right. or you know like maybe they don't need to shop all the time and things like mm. that whereas if they knew that maybe they were using these uh sort of techniques and products and uh, yeah production. it's a selling it's a selling feature i think anyway and i I don't feel like I hear enough about that type of stuff. I've actually no. gone out and, and looked for like UV protective clothing. And it's kind of surprising that people don't advertise. I don't know. Maybe it's just, yeah. me. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it is, it's, um, yeah, shocking how much it's not spoken about. So, yeah. So I would like to sort of, um, yeah, dive into that and kind of, um, understand mm -hmm. what the process of like doing this sort of recycled material is and right. um and i think i might even go into some stores in the meantime to actually see what they're writing on their labels as to like what they're yeah. calling this stuff because if they're not actually calling it this circulose mm -hmm. as it yeah. should be like it's like a brand new material almost yeah and then having sort of stuff around their stores as to what it is, then like, you know, sort of what, like they're just calling it sort of like recycled, you know, something, recycled yeah. material or whatever. Which is not um, appealing. Yeah. You know, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like, even like when like they're like sort of recycled poly polyester, you know, we all know that that's just mostly plastic bottles now. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And if you don't, hello it's, it's just plastic bottles and you Absolutely. know sort of like to be a lot more people in the sort of sustainable um industry are like that's no better because once it's just then made into that material you're not doing anything to recycle that material into like back into material right let alone like the plastic material that we already have you know it's like right. it's you just, just added another to hop to when it exactly. just has to be in a landfill or rotting something yeah. place right yeah um yeah. so yeah so that's uh yeah just a, a little kind of tangent off of that but um yeah something that i thought was really interesting it is um, yeah. that i sort of saw the other day and kind of yeah on that thing of um how uh yeah you know sort of like kind of how like biofabrics are made and things like that and yeah. then sort of is there a bio version of silk um yes. yeah i will do some research and see <laughs> it's cool um, it's a cool idea but just before we go into any more slides i right. thought i would show you the shirts yes oh so wow see, it's kind of see-through well, yeah. um yeah i just have like a raw hem of it because it doesn't it kind of frays yeah uh, is it a plain is it just a a plain weave or is it a yeah special? yeah yeah very plain weave so That's um nice. yeah mm -hmm. just like sort of anything else is weaved really let me show the other side i think you can see the weave better oh um, yeah oh that's it's got a beautiful sheen to it doesn't it for it a has, red hasn't color. It? yeah so like, that's like the inside and that mm -hmm. is a slightly duller than the than the top side mm -hmm. because um i've always also ironed it so like when you iron over it, it kind of goes a bit more shiny and yeah. then this one is actually a project that i did um and it was like based on sort of egyptian yeah um, that's neat i love that so that's why it's kind of got yeah. these yeah so i sort of did these um that's so uh, cool layers. Um, but yeah, so then you can see sort of on here, uh, let's go for maybe the collar, yeah. right? Because um, I put some sort of uh, backing on the inside. Oh, stay, the yeah, stuff. that looks good. Um, but yeah, just sort of kind of how it sort of flows. So, that's like this neat. Got 
is a lot yeah it's kind of cool like plaque that's really neat yeah and it um yeah it's kind of stiffer whereas Uh sort of when you get to this one that's just like this one that then is just like one layer is a lot more sort of flowy oh Um, yeah the hand is much uh more flowy Mm -hmm. but it's sort of still kind of um yes old uh like a a pleat or something really well now what i didn't bring was um there was another shirt that i made that's beautiful that's in my mics down there yeah there was another shirt that i made Mm -hmm. that's like a, a suede shirt but then I did this big sort of ruffle bow on it. Oh, yeah. So with the bow, I then sort of like pleated in all around the back. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and it just like holds, you know, like as soon as you sort of put a weight on it or um, like a, an iron, like a hot iron to sort of press it, although yeah. obviously you don't want it, you still only want it like a silk. Um, yeah, piece. just the, yeah. Because, yeah. Very particular setting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah you know like you don't need it on there for very long and then it will sort of like take that that pleat Mm -hmm. so uh, yeah nice that's cool nice i love that that's really neat thank you (laughs) um also it's just a quick thing i just want to Mm -hmm. jump up but um thank you very much jennifer for being so kind (laughs) it's kind of dry i need to flat iron it a little bit oh (laughs) but it's a little frizzy right now. Oh, okay. you look fine. Um, but I, I had know. my I had my shot thing on Friday, so I'm feeling very good. I'm. I was going to say you're looking absolutely amazing. I'm so. feeling. I'm. I'm still a little surprised how good I feel. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Exciting. Exactly. Um, and then we just got a comment from Lucy. Um, one of my dearest childhood memories. <sighs> is a memory of my beautiful mother in her new silk blouse. Mm-hmm. She blouse sparkled like a fairy tale, which I just thought was beautiful. To oh, say. So thank you very much gorgeous. for sharing that, Lucy. Um, that's cool. And well, we can go Joe, on to the next. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 that's <laughs> fine. Just, just one more. Um, just hello, Joe. Um, the other day I was in a charity shop. I found a jumper. With the brand called Stratovarius. Oh my god! Um, I wonder if I think this is that brand actually. Um, as a Lufia, I'm outraged, not really. but not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I don't even know where that brand come from, has come from, but yeah, that's sort of a new one around. But yeah, I got this one from a charity shop, and I feel like that's that brand, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, um, cool. Right, let me get. The other slides up. Okay. This is probably my favorite slide in the whole thing. Um, This is cute. (laughs) I live in Southern California. We have a lot of hummingbirds. Now, this is not a hummingbird that lives in my backyard, but it lives close to here, just over on the coast. And this hummingbird's name is Olive, Um, and she has little babies. She's sitting on her nest that she built herself. And if you look very, very closely, you can see everything that's holding that nest together is spiderweb. Wow. So this spider, uh, she, you can see what she does is she'll, and I've watched her enough live to see her do this maybe once or twice. She'll actually come back with the spider web in her beak and then kind of like with her beak kind of wrap it around the, the nest area. That is um, so cool that you've actually seen them do that. That's amazing. Yeah. So, but you can see just little strands there just near the branches and stuff, just how tiny these little threads are. Now, the nest that she's sitting on is about the size of a quarter. So it's about that big. 
right? That's crazy. Um, so everything on tiny scale, right? And the hummingbirds use this spider silk all the time. Um, you know, she's sitting on that little nest, but she'll have two eggs and two little rambunctious little chicks in there. So the, the nest will naturally expand um, to fit all three of them while those chicks are growing enough to fly out of the nest. So spider web is pretty strong if you're a hummingbird. <laughs> Not so strong okay. if you walk through it. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, wrong one. Um, and I just wanted to put that up because I'll quite like that. Thank you, Jay. A bird is craftier than me. Yeah. No, so Olive is a genius. Uh, I love her. She's great. So I just wanted yeah. to give you that kind of a real world um you know, view of, you know, it's not just us that think silk is cool. It's actually used in nature quite a bit. And as throw away as we think spider webs are, you know, these little tiny little creatures use that strength in their own nests. Somehow they just figured it out. <laughs> so that's kind yeah, of interesting. That is, yeah. you know? Wow. So if we want to go to the next slide, now we get kind of like boring, right? Oh, they need to So we're going to talk about silk quality. And it's very hard to measure, you know, anybody who has shopped for linens or, or anything like that, you know, goes by things like thread count or, uh, I don't know, fill factors, right? They're hypo, you know, like what the fill level is and a down comforter or things like that, right? Uh, silk is measured in something called a mom or a mom. Now, oh, interesting. how do you pronounce, I don't know how to pronounce that accurately. I but. have never had this <laughs> word even said to me. Yeah, I would say like mom. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it and the, yeah. the measurement it's a measurement in mm's which i thought was cool maybe i should measure any everything in in uh, moms now <laughs> yeah exactly i quite like it yeah. but the the quality of silk um is not a thread count or anything having to do but it's purely by weight um and because uh, silk yeah. The silk thread is such a fine thread. Um, really, you can only really uh, tell the fabric quality by the weight of it. So, uh, so one one mommy or mom equals four point three four grams per square meter, which is very light. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> So those are all of the different, that's the quality, right? It's just measured in this, um, this weight of mom, uh, which is essentially a gram, you know, it, you know, you can measure it in grams and things. But when you shop on Amazon and things like that, you will see um, this mom or, or momi um, referenced. And if you go to the next slide, then we can talk about like the different types of higher quality fabrics in moms. Yes. So if you look at pure silk quality, um, lightweight silk is anything that is below 20 moms. Um, lingerie, right? Think of any sort of um, thin, like uh, panties, bras, things like that. Things that are are thin um, and lightweight, they, they don't have a lot of long-lasting durability. Now, silk, one of the best things about silk is, is it's extremely durable. But in this case, um, in lightweight silk, it, it really is not because it doesn't have, um, it, it's, you know, it, it's going to destroy its at seams typically, right? The pulling away at, at seams and things um, is usually going to be what destroys th those lightweight uh, silk fabrics. Mm. Um, 
medium weight silk is anywhere between oh i think that's supposed to be 28 <laughs> yeah i'm sorry yeah, between so 20 and 28 mom um and this would be an example of this would be like uh, a silk lining for something right that's usually a little bit of a heavier weight of mom in there because it's it's a lining that you're using to be opaque, right? Or it's it's something to keep you comfortable. Like uh, silk lining, I don't see it very much anymore at all. Um, but it used to be silk lining was very popular for expensive women's coats, maybe cashmere coats or, you know, things like that. You would have, if it was a wool, like a merino wool or something like that, you would want a medium weight silk lining inside of the coat so that you didn't itch. Um, now, I don't think, I don't know if clothing manufacturers have that kind of clothing quality still where they would put in a silk medium weight lining for a coat, right? Um, Probably not, but I try to. Yes. <laughs> I persuade uh, my clients to when they get stuff made to get silk as a lining yes. then, then I will because yeah anything's better than polyester <laughs> yes Don't and it just... feel it is so much better for your skin and you feel much more it's it, silk is is remarkably temperature regulating I don't know how or why, but you kind of think about, well, yeah, it's these little silkworms that are asleep inside of their cocoons. Maybe they naturally regulate temperature like that. Like it's kind of a natural miracle, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. It must just be, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I just put it down to like anything that's natural, you know, it yeah. just mm -hmm. clearly has something that is still like of the body in a way. Um, or yeah. Of yeah. And so this medium weight silk between 20 and 28 moms the I once had a pair of pain, uh, I had a suit. It was a power suit. We had power suits back in the 90s. Uh, and it was silk lined. And man, I tell you, when I walked in a boardroom with that suit on, I felt like I could rule the world. Because it oh, just, okay. it was a wool crepe suit that was silk lined, both jacket and pants. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> anyway, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Heavyweight silk is anything that's over 28 um, mom. And we'll see a very heavyweight silk in one of the pictures coming up. Um, I, think, I think most people have seen um, examples of either lightweight or medium weight silk. Um, heavyweight silk is very unusual because it's absolute it's absolutely opaque you cannot see through it which is very unusual th with a silk fabric of any yeah I made length. I made mm -hmm. um, a robe for someone once it was a kimono style robe yeah. and we used raw um, silk for that and it was <laughs> the most beautiful fabric it was yeah very heavy yeah um, had all the slubbing through it Mm. And it was cream. Oh, it was it was just gorgeous. <laughs> like every every part of it. <laughs> yeah, she was very very pleased. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, that's one of those things that you hand down to your. <laughs> but it sounds like, and that's kind of the way I've been looking at um, thrift store shopping a lot as well as I'll see. Um, for, for instance, velvet, right? Mm -hmm. Real velvet is made with silk, and it is almost impossible to find um, velvet silk anymore. Um, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. It's a lot more cotton or polyester out there now. Yeah, yeah. But, but originally, like... Um, you know, all of that, that flocking and that velvet, that Victorian velvet, that was all silk. It's amazing yeah. to think of that, that type of 
So yeah, production. I've got, <laughs> I've got one jacket that I made when I was at uni, and I believe that is actually silk velvet, and it is the wow. most gorgeous velvet. Divine. In the world. But I can't find it ever again. (laughs) And it's like, when I was at uni, I wasn't very good at sort of um, taking notes about like where I was buying the fabric from. And yeah. it's only now that, like, you know, I have business and things, and I'm like, oh, yeah, so it would be kind of handy to know. <laughs> I was like, whoa, whoa. I've done that before. I, like, try to sit and rack my brain. I'm like, where did I see that? <laughs> where? Yeah, um, but but it, sometimes you just never know you're not going to see it ever again, right? So uh, That's the thing. Yeah. So we can look at different types of silk, the weaves. Um yeah. And let's see, I have to bring up because I can never remember all of these weaves and what they are. So I have to. Um, yeah, so there are many, many different types of, of uh, silk weaves. And that is usually what gives silk its characteristically luxurious components um, is the weave, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, the. Uh, satin is probably the most commonly seen type of silk. I would think satin is woven in a way where um, there's a lot of shine and sheen um, on the top part of the fabric. Very kind of flashy. You would see this, this satin, you know, satin sheets, for instance, right? Yeah. Satin is a type of weave, and when uh, that weave is used with silk, it is considered um, probably the the most luxurious quality, um, highest sheen, most slip, everything. Yeah. Now, chiffon is also one of those classic types of weaves, right? We almost never see chiffon woven um, it, with a silk. Um, almost all chiffon you'll see... Um, if you ever saw the Moulin Rouge dancers, they would have chiffon kind of in their petticoats or, or gowns, uh, that type of kind of loose um, woven silk, um, very uh, treated so that it's very stiff, right? Yeah. It's a stiffer fabric. Yeah. And then... Um, Chiffon and organza are kind of, I've always seen them used more as kind of like trimming or, um, ex, you know, kind of like an accessorization to a, a, a thing. Now, taffeta is one of those uh, fabrics that are, that's another one where um, taffeta was always used, especially in the Victorian age, for um ball gowns and wedding dresses and very highly formal occasions. Um, taffeta, men would sometimes wear taffeta suits even. Um, taffeta is uh, shiny like satin. It has a high shine to it, but it there's a stiffness to taffeta. Um, so you'll see a lot of crinkle in taffeta when you move it around. Um, Somebody just recently uh, reminded me of um, Princess Diane's wedding dress when she was getting married. It was very stiff taffeta weave. And I'm not, yeah, I don't know if it was uh, silk. It looked like it might have been taffeta silk, but the taffeta was, it's just a gorgeous fabric. But it's, it's meant to stand up and to kind of be a, a grand kind of gown type of fabric right now we can go we can go through the rest of these I'm not very um, familiar with all of these weaves but they are different types of weaves for silk to produce yeah yeah, to produce a characteristic in the fabric Um, and it's it says quite a lot about silk that it can be woven in so many different ways right um, exactly. everybody i think crepe, crepe de chine and georgette's uh dupioni crepe like most people have maybe heard of those right and, and yeah. so those those weaves can be done in silk 
yeah yeah exactly yeah so like a dupiong and um mm -hmm. crepting are like the ones that have uh they're more sort of like a a raw silking away and that it sort of has that kind of slubbing and is a bit yes yes um crepe mm -hmm. is kind of more of a textured yes. uh, mm -hmm. silk sort of almost like crinkled through it mm-hmm it has uh, a little bit of texture to it. It's nice, but it still flows very nicely. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, Tusa, I don't know. No, but I don't know that one. Brocade, sorry, would be um, like sort of um, when you kind of get something and it, the like there's like a pattern and sort of woven into mm -hmm. it, sit down, um, sort of like the edging um, of a fabric. Yes. Uh, most notably, if you look at um, someone that wears um, a sari and things like that, and often the mm -hmm. edging of the sari will have that kind of... That brocaded, yeah. That's yeah. true. That is true, yeah. Uh, wow. Shard mousse is one of my favorite. I, I feel like I should well, know that, but I can't picture it to describe it now. Shard mousse is a very kind of lingerie type hand fabric yeah. yeah but it doesn't have a sheen to it usually it's a it's a more of a mat um yeah. close to georgette or georgette i believe but charmeuse i love it it's very i don't know silk has a very nice feeling against the skin i think again because it's a natural fiber i like cotton that way as well it doesn't feel foreign for some reason yeah, yeah exactly Fabulous. Okay. So, should I do the next one? Yeah, let's go to the next one, and we'll just kind of look at this. Now, we can geek out really fast here, <laughs> but Absolutely. what this is showing, yeah, what this is actually showing is is that's you know that little um, elect. It looks like an electron microscope type of pho photograph of the extrusion of silk, right? I believe that's from um, a spider in that picture. But here you can see that there's a, a graph of the stress on the um, on the y-axis against strain on the on the x-axis, right? So as stress and strain generally increase, um, you can you can see the strength of these different types of silk fibers, and the spider silk is almost one to one right uh it it keeps its uh strength and it keeps its strength almost one to one stress against strain pretty well right you can see the the spider is almost a 45 degree angle um from the axis and then all of the other ones are different types of cocoon uh silk so those little um MMs, right? Those are the mom measurements. And so those are the different heavier weights. And that's just kind of like what we were talking about with the lightweight silk that would have the lower mom is just doesn't have the uh, enough um, strength against stress, right? The stress of seams, maybe or something like that. Um, or strain. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went down a rabbit hole looking at all of this and then I came back out of that rabbit hole. And I was just like, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of factors <laughs> that go into this. So for all of you out there that would love to dive into a silk comparison rabbit hole, be my guest. Yeah. I have all of the references at the end. Um, yeah, that's what it we is. Find, and then we'll make a video. <laughs> yes. I thought the the strength of the spider silk for the hummingbird, I thought that was kind of a good, you know, if you can imagine like two cranky, hungry little chicks in there, you know, yeah. all, you know, doing their flapping exercises and then the mama on the edge and that spider silk just keeps it all. It's pretty amazing how it keeps it all yeah. together in that nest. So. And that's the thing, like, sort of mm -hmm. seeing the graph how it is, it's almost like sort of the more stress yes. put on, like, the spider silk, the more straying 
<laughs> or yeah, like you know, it's sort of kind of um, it's very it's reciprocal kind of and yeah, yeah, it's really uh, li linear, is what we would say in the biz. Yeah. Um, but it is really interesting. They go into these deep comparisons of, well, the spider was eating this, and then this silkworm was eating this, and this silkworm yeah. was, you know, only four days old, but this one was eight days old. You know, there's wow. all these weird comparisons, right? And I think it's because we're seeing that because silk is such a unique unique uh fiber and they cannot replicate it in a lab at least yet right that we know of so i think that's why we've seen so much research into this you know how much load can this one take how much load can this silk take type of thing but there's yeah. a lot of research out there yeah cool <laughs> well you know i'm glad i'm glad that they're doing it you know because it's sort of uh yeah yeah like uh lucy has put i hope we can go back to fabric actually being valuable again exactly um, yeah, yeah. But maybe this will sort of uh lead into that and that's that's kind of what i I would like to see as well is just, I don't know, maybe let's, you know, let's give the silk people a hand, right? That's pretty, yeah. you know, go silkworms. And yeah, exactly. it's pretty amazing, right? And it's cool that humans figured this out like a long time ago, right? So and that's the thing. Mm -hmm. It's just we like, do yeah, cool like, things. they yeah. see it from a, from a hummingbird, you know, like sort of using it. And then they found out about it. Yeah, oh. dropped into a teacup under a mulberry tree. <laughs> I, it's interesting. Um, and then we can go to the next slide. This is probably my, my favorite. I would love to have uh, on the next slide one of these types of pieces of apparel. Oh, yeah. Oh, right? So this is 35 wow. mom fabric. Wow. And um, it's a completely opaque woven silk which means those little threads are really really close together <laughs> right mm. and so you can see the sheen is incredible Absolutely. Right? uh even the seaming is impeccably done i i don't know how they didn't I, you know how do you not pucker that fabric when you put a needle through it i'm oh, amazed exactly. but yeah, and the piping like is beautiful. Use the different needle. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's like oh, I gotta get it right under so nobody can see it. Yeah, so, yeah. So I really liked this. Um, just this example of um, you know, silk is all about that weight of the fabric, right? And and that's really what measures quality as well. You'll get a lot of different opinions on you know. Uh, mulberry silk is better than the mogu silk or the you know the different types of silk but they all have this really amazing characteristic to be able to withstand incredible stress and strain um, and not break and it's because of its natural properties I think it's ad adaptation through the wild and through the years and things like that and so yeah very amazing our amazing world and the things that we still use in our amazing world on an everyday basis right yeah so. exactly <laughs> and then the last page is just my list of references if anybody wants to see them oh, i that. have I yeah put them in the uh, in the description of the video as well yeah but there's like one about the Silk Road. There's a lot of information out on the internet about the Silk, uh, about Silk in general. And then it's, um, you know, how it traveled throughout the world on the Silk Road and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, um, yeah, sort of like the Silk Road and this thing is, is uh, yeah, it, it's sort of like a fascinating story. Um, it really is. Yeah. But it's one of those things where it's, there's there's a lot of myths and then there's a lot of 
uh, you know, real, like what really happened and that kind of thing. So I'm always worried to misstate because yeah, I'm not quite like sure. It's a bit, it's a bit tricky. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Oh, fabulous. Well, thank you very much. Um, I just oh, want thank to you. From Jeng. If silk Ooh. is measured in mums, I wonder if coarse fabric is measured in daddies. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've not, not heard that one, but <laughs> that would everyone. be okay. You do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's easy to remember those two measurements, so. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh mm. dear. Wonderful. Well, if anyone has any questions, please pop them in the in the comments with a, a cue at the start, <laughs> so I can point them out. Um, but yeah, is there anything sort of else that you kind of uh, wanted to add on top of what you said? No, I don't think so. Um, I don't know. There's a lot there. There's a lot of cool videos if you're interested on oh, yeah. the the making of um, what is it called? I think they're kimonos, but I cannot remember the name of them. Um, just the pure silk kimonos and they are oh, responsible wow. for each process of actually making the long piece of silk and then how they treat it with the different colorations and the, mm. the painting. Oh, it's amazing. So if you're, if you're into silk painting or, you know, things like that, there's some amazing resources on YouTube about that. Lovely. Oh, nice. Um, oh. Yeah. We'll uh, maybe link some of those in as well, and people can go and have a have a nosy of those. Um, but yeah, fabulous. Well, no questions, so we can leave it at that. But that oh, was okay. uh, yeah, again another like yeah, just fascinating. I feel like every every time we sort of touch on another fabric, it's uh, yeah, sort of rolls into kind of questions and uh, other times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and, and I think it's interesting that it's attributed anyway to silk that that that's how you know the people of these diff these really really far away places actually interacted and traded with each other um i think that's really interesting right the you know yeah. shakespeare has um you know a uh, shakespeare has a play called the merchant of venice venice you know and venice w was you know a major uh, part of the silk uh, road and in that trade and that was you know much later <laughs> in time right exactly so, exactly yeah i just i get amazed about that type of stuff and how it's passed down through history and stuff. yeah exactly the same it's just like i don't um yeah you sort of think how can it um uh, yeah, I don't know. So I suppose sort of like kind of who's there making sure, you know, that it sort of gets passed on. It's like everyone's just sort of right. taking it upon themselves in sort of yeah. little bits to make sure that it does. Yeah. Um, like even today, you know, there's sort of like so many um, uh, kind of traditional industries and things that are kind of being uh looked into because they're you know almost getting like lost to time so yes yes and i think absolutely. along that way is obviously where kind of uh silk like sort of origins maybe have kind of um lost their way a bit because mm -hmm. you know sort of we don't actually know the true reason why they came you know like where, yeah. how they found silk and things like that just yeah, mm -hmm. that something was found and it's been dated and, um, mm -hmm. yeah. I think so, it's so interesting, the things that we keep finding that push kind of man further back yeah, into exactly. history. And it, exactly. it, that's just interesting in itself. So. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's sort of, I mean, yeah, it sort of um, makes us understand more you know sort of like how um how more intelligent you know we kind of were back yes. then as well yeah. uh, so i think it's 
it sort of for so long that we were just these sort of cave people. Yeah, yeah in little, yeah, just little groups moving around, not, you know, not knowing what was over there or over there, right? Yeah, so. yeah, that it's this sort of like these paintings and it's like, oh, no, you know, that was just whatever. And then um, uh, I was watching something the other day and it was of this bird, um uh carved into ivory that's been found and that's like sort of one of the earliest depictions of a bird and things like that uh -huh. just think, you know like and that's sort of obviously very crafty creative and right uh, yeah sort of like what what drove them to do that you know yeah um, yeah, yeah. Uh, i just like this it's fun <laughs> no yeah that's fine um oh bless Mary, it's all right. Don't worry. You can uh, catch up catch up on uh, replay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thank you very much for staying around. Um, wonderful. Well, um, we will say good night. Thank uh, you. Because well, right, it's evening here. It's, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's noon here. It's time for lunch. So there you go. <laughs> you guys have lunch. Um, and uh, yeah, and I will I will update. Um, uh yeah kind of what type of stream it should be next week but yeah like i say i'm thinking about um researching into this uh yeah sort of kind of um uh, that's that circulos uh, yeah recycled fabrics and things like yeah. that um, so if we, i don't do that next week that will be like the stream after because i would also like to do another stream on um our sort of word clearing oh yeah so maybe um <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah and then i've got i've got a week off in between so i'm going skiing so uh, oh good that sounds yeah. fun thank you nice where are you going skiing in um in the it's italian uh dolomite oh yeah. girl i'm so jealous i am so jealous <laughs> oh, take yeah, lots so of pictures yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah there, there will be lots of pictures there will also be a video that comes out and i will probably actually share that on here if uh, my fellow um uh skiers don't mind but i'll see oh, awesome. um but yeah that usually comes out like a couple of months afterwards so we'll see about that but yeah i will definitely <laughs> take lots of photos of uh, me and get lots of photos of me um skiing that and things. Fun. Awesome. um and because i'm going to do something quite exciting as well but i won't be uh sharing that on here until after it's done because i don't want to get anything to go wrong mm -hmm. um good. but uh <laughs> good luck to you. good luck thank you very much <laughs> um but yeah yeah so so yeah i can't wait but uh yeah so i will i will um yeah you'll find out sort of what next week's stream is going to be just uh yeah keep checking on the youtubes okay. and um yeah, thank you to everyone for being here thank you very much thank Wingy. you Thank you, Claire. That's Good to right. see you again. Bye. You too, you too. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful rest of your days. Um, <laughs>